Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another beautiful day here at the gathering. We're so blessed that you're making this part of your morning. Um, such a beautiful day to worship the Lord today in the presence of Him, who is with us every time we come into church, every time we walk outside these doors. But one of the things that's been calling me out this week is to worship like the Lord is in the room. To not be like he's somewhere forever away, and that he's listening, but he's forever away. And, you know, I can just worship normally, like what we were talking about last week. I can worship without really expressing myself. I can worship in different ways. And that's kind of true. Everyone does it a little bit differently. But I've been always called out by a couple of my friends this week as we were playing for Megan. Worship like the Lord is in this room sitting beside you because he 100% is. So, uh, think about that as we stand and start with our first song after we start in prayer. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you so much that you can be with us today. That you are everywhere. That you are present with everyone. That you are in this place today. And I pray we might take that seriously. Worship like you are with us. Worship like you're looking at us. Because you are. I uh, pray for this service that it might just bring glory to your sight, the thing we were commanded to do, to spread your name to all different parts of this world. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
You may be seated, not, um, not for uh, prayer time yet, but for the last song today. Um, sometimes I'll have you sit if I remember, by the way. Uh, three songs is a lot. And, well, it's a lot, and also, what I want to say, sometimes it's good to reflect on the song before the sermon, in my opinion. But today, I can guarantee you, you know the song. If you don't, I have no idea what to say about that. But... <laughs> It's been all over the place. It's how great is our God. But it's in its overplayed nature, right? And I'm not going to deny it. It's a little, it's been around for a long time. It's been played a lot. But in, in that nature of things, I tend to ignore songs, right? Um, I'll be the first one to admit when I'm picking out songs, one of the first things I ever think of is how many times have I done it? You know, it's a good little metric. Um, it's a good time to know when's the last time I did a song, so you make sure you're singing some good ones and that you're ignoring some you do a lot, a lot, because I tend to get obsessive about some, right? But one thing that I tend to do, and I, I was called out this week a lot for it, was, oh, I've heard that song a million times, I'm like, I'm doing that this week. And to be honest, I have missed out on a lot of good songs that I haven't sang very much in different services that I do, and mostly this one, and all throughout my life, honestly, to where I'm leaving out songs that I think would get us into worship well because I've heard it. But isn't that one of the points? Familiarity with a song does breathe that we sing it a lot, but also, if the song is good and God wants us to do it, we should just sing it. And for some reason, this song was very upfront to me as a, a way to get into the sermon today. So, um, reflect on that as we sing it this morning. It's how great is our God.
Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, guys. Tripping over everything today. What are you like? Oh, I know. We're going to spend a, a few minutes in prayer. Uh, do you have prayer requests that you'd like to share with that? Any, anything happening? A couple of praise uh, updates. One is that the uh, young lady who we've been praying for, Kimmy uh, Blosser, uh, what's her last name now? Woods. Woods. Uh, who, the one who found out uh, on like Wednesday before she was to get married on Saturday, that a heart was available for her. She needed a heart transplant. And so they went ahead and got married on Wednesday, went over to uh, Cleveland Clinic uh, on that same Wednesday. And uh, she wound up going into a heart transplant surgery then on Thursday morning at like four in the morning. But uh, she is doing remarkably well. Uh, Debbie shared in, in first service that uh, there's a chance that Kimmy will be able to go home uh, this week, later on in the week. But she'll be able to be discharged from the hospital, but they'll all stay in Cleveland for the next four weeks. Oh, okay. Uh, so she'll be discharged from the hospital, but stay in the Cleveland yeah, area where they can keep track of her. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, whether she's in, in Cleveland or, or uh, she's doing here, lot, she's doing really well. Her mom took the Yeah. Uh, then also, Debbie's dad, Russell, we've been praying for him. Uh, he had stroke-like symptoms while we were gone on vacation. It wasn't a stroke, but an uh, um, infection in his brain. Uh, and uh, he is doing much better. Uh, Debbie and I were down on uh, Wednesday and Thursday helping them go to doctor's appointments and that sort of thing. And, and so things are going well. Uh, there. He, he's doing better than I think the family imagined him being able to do. In fact, they're staying by themselves this weekend. And, and um, her mom got hearing aids too and can hear about everything now. So uh, uh, you might want to pray for them about that. <laughs> uh, then um, it seemed like there was, oh, I was with Caleb Austin. Uh, while we were down there. And uh, he showed me some pictures of his ministry in Pakistan. There was uh, one point that the pastors rented uh, uh, an alley uh, to do a service in. And they had like 1,500 people down this alley that uh, Caleb was preaching to in this Muslim nation. And uh, they had to pay off the police twice to let them stay. Uh, that's just the, the price of doing ministry uh, there. But uh, uh, some powerful kingdom things happened. So good things were happening uh, with Caleb. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Myrna McCracken. Uh, she recovers from knee, uh, knee replacement surgery. Um, Bill and Pat Rose from First Service. Their daughter-in-law has been diagnosed uh, with uh, ovarian cancer or uterine cancer and um, and is having surgery uh, this week. Are, are there any other requests that you have? Yes, yeah, sure. My friend found out when he passed away. Right? Okay. He was in Iowa. Right. Just totally away from family. And he had COVID too? So you've lost two friends to COVID in the last a lot. month. Then uh, Ashley was at the emergency room or at the hospital yesterday. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, um, yeah um, just little pregnancy complications, not anything major whatsoever, yeah. but just some prayers for it. So let's pray uh, that this new baby be born whole and well at the right time, at the right place, Amen. and use my baby in the kingdom. It's my baby's it's, oh, Abby's, uh, how many years now? Six years. Six year anniversary. Of time watching. Yeah. And so we want to uh, give God thanks for a long standing marriage. 
Let's uh, go ahead and do a little word of prayer. Lord, we just love you. We give you praise and glory and honor today. Uh, Lord, you're worthy. And I, I thank you that we can come together and sing your praises. We can come together and pray with each other and for each other and for all these other needs. God, we can come and Lord, cast all of our cares on you. We can give you our worries, our fears. We can give you the stuff that's bugging us. We can, Lord, confess our sins where we may have held on to resentments and offenses. And Lord, we can just give it all to you. Lord, thank you that you're a God who desires to work in our lives and you desire to work in our lives even today. God, we give you praise and glory and honor. Would you lift up just one or two requests that are close to your heart right now? I uh, had a little bit of um, uh, 
apprehension about the match against this Yorktown guy uh, again. And uh, I remember uh, before, it was a couple weeks before the county attorney, uh, my mom and my dad and my brother and I had been up at my Uncle Max and Aunt Dixie's. Uh, we'd just been visiting uh, them and we were up there and, and uh, on the way home I said, uh, we were talking about something in the future and I said, well that'll be after I lose uh, the championship. Uh, and for the wrestling, 145 was my weight class. And I said, that'll be after I lose the, the championship. My dad turned around, he was driving. Uh, my dad turned around and said, why did you say that? You, you know, it wasn't exactly a, a positive mental attitude. My dad was wise. He knew that our words really do make a difference. What we say to ourselves, what we say to others, what others say to us, really does make a difference. And actually, uh, my dad uh, may not have known it, uh, but he was really speaking to me uh, uh, about a scriptural principle that that, that our line and that our words can influence our lives in significant ways and, and so we need to be guarding what we say uh, you, you know and, and uh, one of the things that I uh, in, in terms of this uh, I, I thought of this proverb Proverbs 18 21 I, I don't know if you've ever heard it before or not this is something that Solomon wrote uh, but he said uh, in the NIV version, the tongue has the power of death and life. Those who eat it, or those who love it, will eat its fruit. In, in other words, uh, words are like seeds that we plant. And, and eventually those seeds uh, take root and they bear fruit. And uh, we have to live with those consequences. Uh, the New Living Translation says it this way. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap its consequences. Uh, the message says it this way. Words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. Uh, her words matter. Uh, the Passion Translation has it this way. Your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life. A talkative person will reap the consequences. So we, we better be careful, uh, especially if we're talking uh, the words that we use. Uh, words are powerful. Uh, God's words are powerful. You remember in Genesis chapter 1, uh, it talks about the Lord speaking things into existence. Uh, for instance, in Genesis uh, chapter 1 verse 3, uh, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. There is creative power in God's word. Uh, in Matthew chapter 4, uh, verse 4, this is the context of this verse is Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. He's just been baptized by John. Uh, the Holy Spirit has descended on him like a dove, and Jesus has heard uh, the Father say from heaven, You are my Son, with you I am well pleased. Then he goes into the wilderness and he fasts, for, for, fasts and prays for 40 days and 40 nights. Afterwards is, I think, one of the greatest understatements in Scripture. It says, after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, Jesus was hungry. I would have been more than hungry. Uh, but the enemy comes to him, the enemy comes to him and says to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, the enemy was trying to get him to doubt what he had just heard from heaven, that you are my Son and with you I am well pleased. Uh, if you are the Son of God, and, and the devil could see that he was really hungry, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus says this, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, there is life in God's 
word, God's words are powerful. They are creative. They are life-giving. Uh, Jesus said uh, in John chapter 6, verse 33, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words that I've spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. So God's word is powerful. God's words for us are powerful. But we are created in God's image. And our words have power too. One of the ways that we are created in the image of God is that our words have an effect on our lives and the lives of those uh, that we uh, spend time with. Our words are powerful. How many can remember something that was said to you decades ago? For Ashley and Blake, it won't be as many decades as Bill and I. Uh, but uh, how many can remember some of those words that were spoken of? And actually, Solomon says, uh, you, you know, in uh, Matthew 18, uh, 21, that basically our words can be used for good or for ill. They, uh, you, you know, our tongue has the power of death or life. Um, uh, he also says in Proverbs uh, 12, 18, the words of the reckless pierce like swords. The, tongues, uh, the tongue of the wise breaks so uh, we can help or hurt, we can bless or curse, uh, we can cause good or evil, we can add or subtract with our, with our words. Now I ask you to remember a word that was said to you years and, uh, years and years ago, decades ago. How many of you, for how many of you was that a positive word? that you remembered. How many of them, those words were negative? Anybody? You see, we remember the negative a lot longer than we remember the positive. Actually, we nurse and rehearse those negative words. We stew on those negative words. And those negative words, if we hold them in our heart long enough. They can warp our self-understanding and actually be cancerous to our souls. They can rob us of our God-given potential and destiny if we believe those words. When I was a kid, there was uh, somebody that was close to me uh, that said a couple of things about me that have played back in my head for years and years and years and years. And in some ways, those words that I've allowed to play back in my head for years and years and years have kept me uh, from, I think, probably living to uh, the full potential that God has placed in me. Because words are powerful and they can either help us or hurt us. And it's important for us to bear that in mind. It's important for me to bear that in mind uh, when I speak to my wife, when I speak to my children, when I speak to my grandchildren. And, and sometimes I don't always do a good job of that. So, that, all that being said, uh, let me say this. Uh, we need to listen and speak with great care. We need to be careful that what we are saying is in line with what God says about us in His Word. We need to be careful that uh, what we speak to others is in line with what God uh, says about them in His Word. 
because our words do have an effect. Um, so uh, we need to evaluate uh, what we are hearing and saying in the light of God's word. Uh, for instance, if uh, we think to ourselves, there is no hope, I might as well just give up. That's uh, some negative self-talk that we, we can't afford uh, to let harbor in our hearts. You know, with God, there is always hope. We serve a God who can cause all things to work together for good to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Uh, we serve a God who has begun a good work in us and is able to carry that work out to completion. And, and so, if we give in to the idea that we're a failure or a fraud or we're not going to make it, brothers and sisters, we will miss what God has for us. We need to hold on to these words uh, of life. We need to evaluate what we are hearing about ourselves and what we are saying about ourselves, what we are saying about others in light of God's Word. There may be some folks in our lives we need to filter. Anybody ever had somebody in your life that whenever you were around them, they just drained you of hope? It was like you had a balloon and they popped it every time. Brothers and sisters, uh, we can love those people, but sometimes we need to love them from afar. Uh, we, it, we need to have positive, faithful people speaking into our lives, speaking words of life in, into our lives. We need to be listening more to the Lord than we do to others or even ourselves. That, that's one of the reasons that I believe it's so key for us to be in Scripture. Because in Scripture we find uh, that the Holy Spirit uh, will highlight uh, words of life for us, uh, words of hope for us. Uh, we'll learn that we can make it. I was reading in Psalms today, and, and the Psalm that I was reading in, in uh, the uh, New Living Translation, Psalm 130, there was a verse that says, I am counting on the Lord. Uh, you, you know, and basically the idea is that the Lord can be counted on. Uh, the Lord can uh, be counted on to come through uh, for us. And, and because of that, uh, brothers and sisters, you and I can make it. We can make it. Now, I said even ourselves. Now, I, mean, I don't know if you're like me. Uh, maybe you're not. Uh, but one of the things that I find, uh, you, you know, we all talk to ourselves. There's a voice in our head all the time. You have a voice in your head that, that's going all the time, don't you? Sure. Yeah, and so does Amber. Uh, I mean, we all do. Uh, we've all got this voice in our head. And uh, how many of you are your own worst critic? I, I mean, you just give it to yourself all the time. In your, in your head, in your voice, you're saying terrible things about yourself. I, I know because I do the same thing. I'm my own worst critic. And a lot of times what I'm saying in my head doesn't line up with God's Word. Actually, the truth of the matter is if we said to our friends the things that we say to ourselves, we wouldn't have any friends left. Brothers and sisters, we need to be kind to ourselves. We need to say what God says about us over ourselves. Again and again and again. When we speak to others, we need to speak with great care. I, I, as I've been preparing for this message, I've uh, thought to myself, what sort of words have I been speaking to Debbie? What sort of words have I been speaking to 
Megan and Kyle and Zach and Kirsten and Abby and Jake. And especially what sort of words have I been saying to my grand gals, Odessa and Stella? Are they words of life? Or are they words that are going to expand their horizons? Or are they words that are going to wind up hurting them in the long run? Uh, we need to speak with great care uh, about ourselves. So you, you see, uh, Jesus in Matthew uh, chapter 12, verse 36, uh, says that this in the, this is the New Living Translation. And I tell you this, you must give an account on the judgment day for every idle word you speak. Well, one of the versions says, every careless word you speak. Basically, every offhand word you speak. Uh, the message has it this way. Every one of those careless words is going to come back to haunt you. There will be a day, uh, there will be a time of reckoning. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. Words can either help you or hurt you. Words can create heaven for you or create hell for you. So we need to be careful of what we say. We need to let go of hurtful words and offenses. I, I told you earlier about the two phrases that have recurred in my mind over and over again and that somebody spoke over me years and years ago. You know what? Those were just offhand comments that they made. They may not even remember. I, I think they probably don't remember what they said to me. And they for sure don't know that I've carried them for 50 years, rehearsing those words. And you know, they shouldn't have said what they said. Uh, it was wrong for them to say what they said. They didn't realize the power of their words. But the holding on to it, the nursing and rehearsing of it, the letting those words do soul damage to me, that's on me. That's not on them. And so I just need to let it go. Now, like forgiveness, I, I'm convinced that uh, when we forgive, a lot of times, We'll forgive something and, uh, it, you, you know, we'll feel good about it and then something will bring it back to the fore. It, it's kind of like grief. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, those that are in grief, it, it's amazing what sparks the grief. But, but stuff comes back up. Uh, forgiveness is like that. Uh, we can be hurt deeply and, and you, you know, uh, forgive it, uh, let it go, and, and then it comes back. Uh, we will need to let go of those words. We will need to let go of those offenses over and over and over again. And, until uh, finally we're broken free from them. But uh, God can give us grace to do that. God can give us grace uh, to uh, let go of the hurtful words and, and the offenses. God can give us grace to be, begin to speak helpful um, words of life and blessing and hope over ourselves and over others. So, that leads to this last point. We need to speak words of life and hope over ourselves and others. There is power in doing that. It, it, it's part of the way that we bless e each other. It's part of the way that we encourage each other. It's part of the way that uh, instead of draining hope from others, that we pump hope uh, back into them. And, and so, I don't know if you've ever done this, but uh, I've got John 3.16 right there, right? Uh, now, I've left some blanks there. Uh, we know that it says, 
uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I want you to put your name in there. So you would say it like this. I'll say it for Kathy. For God so loved Kathy Benjamin that he gave his one and only son so that when Kathy believes in him, Kathy shall not perish, but have eternal life. And I could go through all of us and say that same thing. You can say that over yourself. In, in fact, softly, in a whisper, why don't you put your name where the blanks are? And say that to yourself right now. How about that? For God so loved Bill. Stella in the nursery causing the riot that he gave his only son. We need to say those life affirming words over each other. Uh, we, we could say a, a lot of other verses, but one more. Uh, one more verse I want to, and I basically changed this into a prayer. It, it's Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, I'll read it for myself. Lord, you know the plans that you have for Tim Terrell. Plans to prosper Tim Terrell, not to harm Tim Terrell. Thank God. Plans to give Tim Terrell hope. Those are the sorts of words that we need to be speaking over ourselves. But not only ourselves, but our children and our grandchildren. Because these are God's life-giving words. They are words of life and hope, and they will make a difference. They will make a difference. Our words our words are powerful. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord, we do want to make the most of the words that we use. Lord, some of our words, God, have that we've said over ourselves, some of the words that have been said over us, uh, especially words that we nursed and rehearsed, they, they have hurt us. But God, we thank you uh, that there have also uh, been people that have spoken words that are in line with your words over us, uh, words that are words of hope, uh, words of faith, uh, words of love, uh, words of life. Uh, God, help us to be people that speak words of life over ourselves, uh, over those closest to us uh, over even strangers that we meet. Help us to speak words of life. Help us to speak words of life over, uh, over this congregation, uh, over AUMC. Lord, thank you that you have a plan and a future for us. God, you are worthy and we give you praise, glory, and honor and adoration. Uh, God, uh, thank you for your wonderful words of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me as we uh, join Blake in singing praise? Lord, I come and I confess bowing here I find my rest without you
Thank you for taking us with the day, guys. Have a great Sunday.